morning, all. Today we're going to be learning about circuit elements. And just to go back and recap a little bit to remember how charge flows, let's get a battery. We'll make it a 9 volt battery. That'll be the positive terminal and the negative terminal. And we'll connect this battery to wire. And we know that positive charges move away from the positive terminal and they move towards the negative terminal. And we know that the negative charges, the electrons, are going to move away from the negative terminal towards the positive one. Now conventionally, we always define current as the positive charges moving away from the positive terminal and to the negative terminal. But in reality, that's not what happens. Benjamin Franklin didn't realize that protons were stuck. They were rigid. All the protons are stuck in a conductor. The electrons are the ones that move. So really, the electrons are going to move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, and the protons are not going to move at all. But conventionally, what we're going to say when we talk about charge, current, moving charge, we're going to talk about the positive charge is moving, even though we know they're not moving. We just like pay homage to Benjamin Franklin. Okay, so make sure you have your notes ready to go. We're going to be talking about circuit elements today. And what I'd like to do first is I'd like to define them and show you what their diagrams are so we can start building our diagrams and know what each one means. Make sure you pause the tape so you can take down the definition. Okay, so this is a resistor. Let me show you what the diagram for a resistor looks like. There you go. That's going to be a resistor. And it's a device used to resist or slow down current. Now, what you should be doing right now is pausing the tape, writing this down. All right, let's look at a capacitor now. We talked about capacitors already. It's a device that's used to store electric potential energy, and this is what it looks like. The diagram for a capacitor is going to look like that. You should be pausing again, taking down the definition. Let me show you what a light bulb looks like in our diagrams. There you go. It looks like a little, di a little light bulb. It's a device that produces light by passing electrical current through a filament. Now you should be pausing again and taking this down. Let me show you what a switch looks like. That would be an open switch. And there's a closed switch. And a switch is a device used to easily connect or disconnect a circuit. So if it's open in the open position right here, that would be a disconnected circuit. And then when we close it here, and we connect the circuit all the way through, it would be a connected switch. Connected circuit. So we've got a battery. Let me show you what a battery diagram looks like. One side is going to be longer than the other. The longer side is going to be our positive terminal. And the shorter side is going to be our negative terminal. And a battery is an energy storage device that provides a constant potential difference between two terminals. Let me show you what a, a plug looks like. It's very similar to a battery diagram, except we're going to have a circle to denote that it's a plug and not a battery. And a plug is the device that provides constant potential difference between two, two terminals. A battery is an energy storage device. A plug is just a device. So we're not storing any energy with the plug. We're just plugging in and getting energy. The battery actually stores it so I can take the battery and take it someplace else. And then lastly, our wire. Just a line. There is a wire at 90 degrees. Here's another one, you know, a wire is just a conductor with neg negligible resistance that is used to con connect circuit elements. So we might take a resistor and connect it with a wire to something else, or a battery, like we've seen already, and we'll use a wire 
a line to connect one terminal to the other. Okay, so those are all our diagrams that we're going to be using. I want to take a moment and talk about open and closed circuits. Now, in order for charge to move, we've got to have one of these. Okay, now an open circuit is not going to allow charge to flow. Charge is going to be able to move. So let me see. I'm going to draw the battery. So there's my battery. Longer side is the positive side. Shorter side is the negative side. And now I'm going to connect it, let's say, to a resistor. There's my resistor over here. But instead of connecting the wires together so we have a closed circuit, I'm going to have an open circuit right here. I'm not going to connect it. What's going to happen is that our negative charges or our positive ones, let's do convention, our positive charges they're going to get stuck right here. They're not going to be able to move. And if this one can't move, that one can't move. And if that one can't move, this one can't move. They're all going to be stuck. It's like big traffic jam. No current is going to flow. This is an open circuit. For a closed circuit, charges can move. I'm going to draw the same thing, except I'm going to close the circuit up. So here's my battery again, connected to a resistor. And I'm going to have a closed circuit. I connected the entire thing. Now, my positive charge it can flow all the way through the circuit. This one can move this way, this one can move, they're all moving, they're all moving, they're all moving. Charge is flowing because I have a closed circuit. Over here, charge is not flowing, it's all backed up right here because I have an open circuit. So if we want charge to flow, we need a closed circuit. We need to have a path that the traffic, the current, can travel through. Okay? That's the difference between open and closed. We want charge to flow, we need a closed circuit. Now I want to talk to you about series and parallel circuits. Series, if circuit elements are connected in series, that means that you have to pass through all of them as you travel the circuit. Traverse just means to travel. So if circuit elements are in series, you have to pass through all of them as you traverse the circuit. Let me get the definition of parallel up here, and then we'll look at the difference. For parallel circuit, you have the option to bypass an element as you traverse the circuit. So if circuit elements are in parallel, you can bypass one of them. You can bypass a number of them. You have the option. If they're in series, you don't have the option. So let me draw a couple circuits here. Hmm, let's see. Let's take a plug. Look at your notes. Look at the diagram for a plug. Okay, I, I believe a plug looks like this. There we go. And let's have it connected to a capacitor. Look in your notes. Find the diagram for a capacitor. Two lines of the same length. And then a resistor. And then we'll connect it all up so we have a closed circuit. A positive and negative. Okay. The capacitor, I'll label it C1, and the resistor, R1, these are in series with one another. Because as I travel through the circuit, I have to pass through all of them. I have to pass through the capacitor and the resistor if I want to make it through the entire circuit. If I want to complete a loop, if I want to have current to flow, I don't have the option. I have to go through the capacitor and the resistor. So we would say that these are in series with one another. Okay, let's look at a capacitor and resistor in parallel. Let's have a plug again. I like the plug. So here's my diagram for a plug. One line longer than the other, and the longer line 
is the positive terminal. Let's have a capacitor, two lines of the same length, and a resistor in parallel. Okay, now I have the option to choose whether or not I want to bypass one. So as I travel through my circuit here for a closed loop, I can either go through the capacitor and bypass the resistor. I can go through the capacitor and bypass the resistor. Or I can go through the resistor and bypass the capacitor. If they're in parallel, I get to choose. Which one do I want to bypass? Okay, I'll go through the, the capacitor to have a complete circuit, a closed circuit. Charge can flow, current can move, and I'm bypassing the resistor. Or, if I want to make my path through the circuit, I can choose to go through the resistor and bypass the capacitor. The fact that I can bypass one or the other means that these are in parallel. In this situation, I can't bypass. I must go through the both, so these are in series. We got series here, got to go through both of them. I don't have the option to bypass. Parallel, I do have the option to bypass. I can go through one or the other as I make a complete loop through the circuit. So let's take a moment and put some of this to use. I hope you've been taking notes. If you haven't, rewind. Lovely thing about the video, take some notes. All right, let's see. Let's construct a circuit consisting of a battery and two resistors in series. I want you to go ahead and do it first. So pause the video and give it a shot. See if you get it right. Construct a circuit consisting of a battery and two resistors in series. Here we go. A battery and two resistors in series. And if we remember, series means that we have to go through both of them if we traverse the circuit. So let's see, traversing the circuit, traversing the circuit, going through one, going through the other, traversing the circuit, and coming back. These are in series. Let's label them resistor one and resistor two. Give yourself a nice pat on the back if you got this right. It worked. Right, let's give it another shot. Let's construct a circuit consisting of a battery and two capacitors in parallel. So pause the video again. See if you know what you're doing first. Check your understanding. See if you can make a, a circuit with a battery and two capacitors in parallel. I'll show you what the answer is. You see if you got it right. Battery again. Let's see. One long line and one short line. We've got two capacitors. Those are two lines of the same length. Let's see. These capacitors are in parallel, which means that I have the option to bypass one as I travel the circuit. Let's label these C1, C2. Let's see now. Um, Traveling the circuit, traveling the circuit. Let's go through capacitor one. Let's see if we can make a complete loop. We made a complete loop. Current is flowing. And we bypassed one of the capacitors. That must mean we're in parallel. And look at that. If I want to take the second path, I can bypass the other capacitor. These are in parallel. You got this right. Good work. Tell you what, let's try the challenge problem. Bum, bum. Construct a circuit consisting of a plug connected to two light bulbs in series that are parallel to a capacitor. Woo! Tell you what, why don't you pause the video right here, see if you know what you're doing. Pause the video, give it a shot. Here we go. A plug. One large line and one small line. Just like a battery, so we've got a circle. We've got two light bulbs in series. That means that we have to go through both of them. 
but they're parallel to a capacitor, meaning that I can bypass the light bulbs or I can bypass the capacitor. Let's see here. Okay, let's have one loop that has two light bulbs on it. And if I go down that path, I have to go through both of them. That means that they're in series. Okay? And then they're parallel to a capacitor. Parallel to a capacitor. Let's label these. Capacitor 1, it's going to be light bulb 1, light bulb 2. And let's make sure that we're, our light bulbs are in series, but they're in parallel with the capacitor. So, traveling, traveling, traveling. I'm going to go through one light bulb. Oh, i got to go through the next light bulb. And then I can make a complete loop. <laughs> and I bypassed the capacitor. Look at that. And then if I go through the capacitor, I get to bypass the light bulb. So these must be in parallel with each other. These are in parallel, but the light bulbs, the light bulbs are in series. Light bulbs are in series, but the capacitor and the light bulb are in parallel with each other. You got this right. Give yourself a pat on the back. That is good work. Oh, by the way, I misspelled a word in this. Go back and find it. If you find it and you email me, I'll give you a point. Good luck.